Welcome. This is the Senior Community Center's Something to Talk About. Uh, these programs are sponsored by Fieldstone Communities of Bainbridge Island. Fieldstone offers memory care and is constructing assisted and independent living, and they are now accepting residents. Uh, they also are offering day stay and respite programs. Call 360-689-4314 to schedule a tour of Fieldstone's apartments on Rolling Bay today. We also would like to start by acknowledging that we are gathering on the ancestral homeland of the Suquamish people, the people of the clear salt water, who have lived on the waters of the Salish Sea since time immemorial. We honor them and we are very grateful for, our, our, for their hospitality. And we are here today to talk a little technology as we do once a month uh, with John Chen. And uh, we're kind of hitting some of the topics that have been raised, I guess, John, plus things that you've wanted to get to, but haven't quite gotten around to in the past few months. So thank you, as always, for uh, putting together a program, and uh, we look forward to learning with you. Okay. <clears throat> well, the topics I'm going to talk about today focuses on, first, some handy little tips and tricks on what you should do to keep your private information secure. Then we're going to move into photos and what are some of the basic editing tools that you can use that you may already have on your computer or your phone or your tablet. And what are some of the general things most people end up doing? And during this whole process, if any of you have a question, like if you want to talk about iCloud, for example, to, for your photos, uh, go ahead and bring them up and uh, we'll tackle it if we have time for it. If not, I'll add it to the next session. And if any of you have some, uh, if you want some personal uh, info on something, go ahead and send me your email address and I will send the uh, best I can. I will send the uh, answers back to you. So <clears throat> I'm going to share one of my screen, uh, which is a presentation screen. And during that time, I may not be able to see you but I can flip back and forth between the presentation screen and the Zoom session. So here we go. Okay, can everybody see the session number 10? Yep. Okay, great. <clears throat> First, I want to talk about how to protect your ID and your privacy. Now, quite often, you may uh, want to sign on to, let's say, for example, uh, some store or some merchant or some website and they will flash at the front of your screen something that says sign in with Apple or sign in with Facebook or sign in with Amazon. My recommendation is create a brand new ID. Don't use some social media uh, ID to sign on to some of these merchants, mainly because uh, this will allow you, if you, if let's say you sign on to uh, Bed Bath and & Beyond, and let's say you use Facebook ID to sign on to your Bed Bath & Beyond website to open an account. If you use Facebook to sign on to um, a, a better example, let's say you use Amazon ID to sign on to uh, Bed Bath & Beyond. That means Amazon will know you are shopping at 
Bed Bath & Beyond, that's number one. Now they can also tell what you may be looking at at Bed Bath, Bath & Beyond. So they can send you targeted advertisement. Also, if somewhere down the line you decide to uh, you decide to change your ID in the future, that means you may have to go into Bed Bath and Beyond website and make some changes because they are now all sort of interlinked. <clears throat> this also makes it a little bit difficult if you want to make uh, a change to your ID. So it is best to keep every single website you go to totally independent. Mm -hmm. And by the way, this also allows Amazon to market your private info to say, okay, you shop at here, you shop at another store and et cetera. There are some exceptions. Um, <clears throat> it's okay to use the same ID from the same provider. For example, if you use Amazon and you also go into Amazon Photos or Amazon Books, it is perfectly fine for you to use the same ID for all of them. All of them. It is also okay to use features provided from Apple. And it is a little bit different. Apple has a feature called Hide My Email. Now, here's the example from, I believe it was from Bed Bath & Beyond. You try to sign on to BBB. You can put in your email address here, uh, or you can sign in with Apple or Google or Facebook. Now, my recommendation is don't sign in with Google or Facebook, but if you wish, you can sign in with Apple. Why? <clears throat> Apple has a feature called hide my email. Or you can tell the sign on page to use your normal Apple email address. Or you can click here to say hide my email. What hide my email would do is Apple will create a fictitious email address. It's not really fictitious. It's a, a string of characters. And that email address will be given to, in this case, BBB. So BBB will end up sending you and communicate to you using that string of characters. When BBB sends you an email, that string of, using that string of characters as an email address, that email will end up at Apple. Apple will turn it around and send it to your real iCloud email address. <clears throat> so BBB will never know what your real email address is. He only knows this string of characters. And so if one day you decide that, oh, I'm getting too much, too many junk mail from this one store, you can go in here and just terminate that uh, hide my email email address with BBB. And from that point on, all the email that BBB sends to you will essentially get thrown away. Now, how many, e the, how many of these fake email you can create? As many as you like. So you can have a uh, hidden email address with every single store that you work with. And all of them will eventually route the email to your real email address and no one else would know what it is other than Apple. So this is a safe way to uh, hide your own, your own email address from any of the merchants or any of the websites you normally deal with. Questions on that? 
I have a question. Am I okay. coming through? Um, it sounds to me that I would still get all the emails from them, though. You will. Yeah. Until the day you said, until the day you decide that I don't want them anymore, then you can cancel it. And the second you cancel it, BBB, in this case, BBB won't know where you are. It would just okay. you'll still think that that fake email address is still alive and they'll keep sending it to there, except Apple has just taken that email and thrown it away. So but initially you, when I change it, I'm I'm not I'm not stopping the emails from Bed Bath and Beyond. I'm just getting them all without them knowing my email address. Is that right? That is correct. Okay, got it. And, uh, Interesting. So, uh, and yes, you can, as I said, you can have as many of them as you like. There is a low no limit. Uh, <laughs> wow. So you can have thousands of these fake email addresses set up by Apple. The first few of them, if you like some guidance on uh, taking you through how to create them, just let me know, and maybe we can set up a session to help you do that until you get used to it. I have another question. Does that mean that you have to have a different password for each one? Well, you would anyway. You would still have a have a uh, individual password for every website you go to. It's just they won't know your real email address okay. to, to pester you. Got it. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Another topic, which is red receipt. I don't know how many of you uses Apple's message, iMessage, or uses any other text messaging system. It, it's not limited to Apple. In many of these messaging systems, you can turn on a little switch, which says, Anytime someone else sends me a text message, I when I look at it, the software will automatically tell the other person that John has read your text. Now, you may not want the other person to know you just read their text. Maybe you read it and you don't feel like answering that text maybe you want to do it after you get home but the other person can tell you just read that message and they may be curious as why you are not responding to their message so what you can do is you can turn it off and <clears throat> now what happened if uh, let's say your family member sends you a text maybe you do want to let that family member know that you read it. It's your choice. So you can turn off <clears throat> red receipt in Apple's iMessage. This is how you turn it off for everyone. You go into settings, go into the message app, then send red receipt, turn the slider to off. Now, your, your phone will no longer send any red receipts out to anyone. Now, how to turn on a specific person, like a family member. You go into iMessage, select a specific person, tap the little right arrow sign to the right, right side of that person's name, scroll down to send red receipt, and that will turn the slider and turn turn the slider to on. What that th these steps have done is you have stopped sending red receipt to everyone. Then selectively you can pick and choose which person you want, you do want to send red receipts to. So this is another way to keep your personal life private. 
You don't have to tell another person when you have read their text. And <clears throat> when you feel like it, you can respond to it. Okay. Now we're getting gonna get, get into photos. <clears throat> Here are some terms that different people have. Um, John, sorry to interrupt. It looks like Joanna has a question. Uh-huh. It was okay. I just wondered, is there a difference between the phrase I message and text? And uh, I lost you there for a second. Well, I noticed on the previous uh, thing on the screen, the first bunch for general said text and the second bunch for select people said in iMessage. Oh, the first one said settings and the second one says in iMessage. Is iMessage different than regular message? Well, iMessage is the official word Apple uses to call the messaging app. Okay, so it's the same in how to turn on as in how to turn off. It's just that one says iMessage. Ah, okay, I see. It's not different. You're talking about this little guy right here. Yeah, it's the same as the one above, though. Yes and no. Over here, oh. it is the same. It's my fault. I should have. I should have been not a fault. I'm just an incorrigible <laughs> editor. I wanted to know if it was a difference. Uh, Move on. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> but let me clarify, though. Thanks for okay. bringing it up. How to turn it off for everyone? You do that in settings. How to turn a specific person on? You do it in the message app. Oh dear. Okay. The settings app is go to your home page on the phone or pad or Mac. It's a it's a picture of a gear. All right. And it's like a sprocket wheel. <clears throat> and that's a setting that is used across the board for that device. Then you, when you are using the message app, that specific person you want to respond to, you can click on that person's entry on the left on the left hand side. And then next to that person's name, there's a little right arrow. So the way you get to it is a little bit different. Setting is for everybody. For a specific person, you go into the message app. And, and let me make a note. Um, at the end of this presentation, I'll go into and show you the differences and how do you get into either one of those. And then it'll be, it'll, it'll be much more clear for you. Okay. First of all, let's. This is now we're getting into photos, and you'll hear PPI quite often. And what is a PPI? It's pixel per inch. <clears throat> In this example, we have one inch across, one inch down. Think of it as a uh, this entire inch by inch space is a certain color. In this case, gray. Then we have two PPI, meaning two in two across and two down. And for PPI, there are four little dots across by four little dots down. In this case, eight PPI, there are eight dots by eight dots. What what that would mean is it translates to something that is not very crispy, clear, to something a little more clear, to something that is very high density, meaning crystal clear. <clears throat> so low density in this case is 
one pixel, which is one little dot. And there are that many of them across by that many down and all within one inch. And medium density and high density, you'll see that all of these little dots, each one of them can be a different color. Now, <clears throat> this technology has been around forever. If you pick up any newspaper and you see the headline or even see somewhere in the text, if you get a good magnifying glass, focus on a single character on the newspaper, you will see that that character is made up of a whole bunch of little dots. The letter A is made up of a whole bunch of dots. B is a whole bunch of dots. So, and <clears throat> in the old days, the newspaper, the photographs on the newspaper, in the newspaper is really fuzzy. It's not crispy. It's most likely because they were using something of a low to medium density. Over time, technology changed, printing presses got better, and they started get using higher and higher density uh, <clears throat> uh, printing presses. And now the photograph on the newspaper is crispy clear. Not as good as a photograph that you can get printed at a store, but it is much better than years ago. Okay. How do you make changes to a, let's say you use your phone to take a photo. What can you, what software can you use to make changes to it? For the Apple so system, there is an app called Photos. Same with Google, they call it Photos. Amazon, they have something called Photos. So do Windows, they have something called Photos. They are, they all work a little bit different but they do the same thing. It allows you to make changes to refine a photograph that you have. If you want some advanced features, now, by the way, the standard software that comes with your device, they are already very advanced, but if you want more advanced, you want a lot of other features that you want to do. For example, a lot of artists may want to do this. You can go out and buy something called Photoshop or Lightroom, or you can have some, I use something called Pixelmator Pro. Each one of these has a free trial version or paid for pro version. And they have, they all work a little bit differently, but they give you the same thing, allow you to make changes to a photo. Okay. <clears throat> there are other things that's may you may already have on your device. Uh, one is a duplicate photo finder. I don't know about you, but quite often I'll take a picture and I would say, ooh, maybe I want to take another one just in case. Uh, and quite often, if I'm in a restaurant with friends and we may ask one of the staff at the restaurant, hey, would you take some pictures uh, for us? And that person may end up taking four, five, six, seven pictures. All of us are, has the same facial expression, same pose, but to be safe, that person took six whole bunch of pictures. Now you want to get rid of them. So there's a duplicate photo finder. Uh, your Apple device, your Apple Photos app has a feature in it, which will go out and look for photos that are very, very similar or almost identical. And then you can make your choice of getting rid of all the ones that you don't like. Another one's photo organizer. That's also in most of these photos, photo apps, but there are also freestanding ones out in the market. And that you can use to, let's say, organize all the photos that you have taken 
for a specific trip or of a specific person. So <clears throat> what are the, some of the things that you may want to do with photos? But before getting to that, any type, kind of photos on your computer has the suffix of JPG or JPEG or PNG. Those are all photographs. And by the way, there are a whole series of other type of suffix that's used for photos. So we have JPEG, which is the most common. File type for videos, which is MPEG or Windows Media or a movie or MP4. Now, <clears throat> size of these pictures, some of the photos are huge, depending on what choice you made during, in your settings. Uh, usually they are represented in width by height, such as 2049 by 1536. What that means is that photograph has 2,000 little dots across from the left to the right and 1,536 little dots from the top to the bottom. And the resolution is 72 little dots, pixels per one inch. So there are a lot of small dots. There's a term that different people use called DPI, which is dots per inch, which is number of dots in one inch of an image printed by a printer. PPI is number of pixels in one inch of image displayed on a monitor. What both of these are referring to is how many dots now, on your, on your phone, on your tablets, or your computer, if you look at the screen, they look like a solid color, but if you look really close, they're actually little, tiny little dots that make up that entire screen. So, you may come across some of these terms. What are some of the things that you may want to do? The most common one, is straighten. You, you didn't get a chance to compose the picture. You just shot it. And now you have a picture that's crooked. And maybe uh, a <clears throat> street light isn't straight up and down. It's at an angle. Or you may have taken a picture uh, with the camera rotated and you want to, you know, you would like to see the picture right side up. So that's a rotate. Flip, which is a mirror image. Uh, remember, when you take a, take a picture of something, what's on the right is on the right. What's on the left is on the left. It's different than when you're looking in the mirror. What's on the right is right but it looks like it's on the left. And let me revise that a little bit. If you use your, if you hold your right hand up and stand in front of a mirror, the mirror image shows you actually, looks like you have your left hand up. All right, so you can flip a photograph so the right actually shows up on the left and left shows up on the right. And you can play with that. Crop, as you usually when you take a photo, uh, maybe there's some another person on the side of the photo that you would like to get rid of, or maybe a tree is growing and taking up a too big, <clears throat> too big of an area in the photo. You can get rid of it using crop. Now these photos that modern, cam uh, modern cam cameras or modern phones can take, they are actually quite large. It can be up to an average of eight or 10 megabyte for a single picture. Sometimes it gets a little bit big 
to send. So you can resize it. Now, when you resize it, the photograph becomes smaller. It also doesn't take as much room to send it. <clears throat> Exposure maybe, again, the modern cameras in the phones are quite advanced. It can figure out what is the ideal light or dark uh, environment that picture should be taken. But maybe you don't like it, so you can lighten or darken it, uh, or you can brighten or make it more contrasty. And this bottom one, heal, repair or scratch removal. How often have you come across a paper photograph that has a tear in it? It will be nice if you can get rid of that tear, meaning to heal it or to repair it. This is also handy. Let's say there's a, a telephone pole or a tree growing out of somebody behind a person and it looks like that person has a tree growing out of the head. So you can actually take a part of the photograph and remove it. Okay, I'm gonna go through some samples here. I have a picture and you'll notice that the horizon looks like it's a little bit crooked. The water is higher over here than over here. Looks like the water should be running downhill. <clears throat> this is on an iPhone screen. You will notice that up here, there's something called edit. This, you tap on that button, edit, and you will end up with something like this. And what you want to do is be able to rotate this photograph so at least the water looks flat, looks level. So I'll be clicking on this button. Now, <clears throat> At this point, I've sw I switched to a different device because it's easier for me to work with. Right here is that button. I click on it and I click it and you will see that on the right, there's a, a bar. I can drag the bar one way or the other until I like the way this, this uh, water line is showing up. When I'm happy with it, I'm, I can say done. And now I have straightened up picture. And here's a before and after. This is, <clears throat> water is not level. And this one it is. Now, you will notice that when you crop, or rotate or straighten a picture, you'll find that over here, there is a building that's painted yellow or gold. To the left, there's another building in the original picture. Notice after I straightened it, the gold building is now the leftmost building. Also behind the sailboat, there's this amount of space. And now the sailboat is right up to the edge of the photo. So just remember that when you rotate a picture, you may lose some of the edges. So it is best if you can to take the photo the best you can. So you have to do minimal amount of cropping afterwards. Another example, I just... <clears throat> on the internet, I saw this picture of Machu Picchu. And I said, hey, that's a good picture of it. It shows the elevation. And I may want to keep it. So I'll go into edit. And crop out the words on top and bottom. And this ends up being the final picture. And you can use what comes normally on the um, on your phone. 
you can add text to it. Maybe you want to add our next trip or whatever comment you want to make. And then looking at it, you think, well, do you see this person? I wish that person isn't there. And in this case, I used a repair uh, tool and I took that person out of the picture. Now, just remember the computer is using technology to actually take images from both sides of this person and stick it in between. In other words, right here, there may be a waterfall, but because this person was blocking that part of the photo, the computer can make up an image from ether. So all it can do is take the image or the color next to the item that I want to get rid of and just fill it in. Okay, <clears throat> does that make sense? Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Now, we're earlier we we're talking about settings and messages. Let me see if I can hang on while I go into message. Okay. I have to say that because I'm sitting on a Mac, it's hard for me to produce the image that I wanted to show you. Setting <clears throat> is, uh, there's no easy way, ah, maybe I do, maybe I do. Okay. Can you? All right. Right here is settings. I can tap settings. And mm, this is not as easy because I'm looking at everything upside down here. Messages. Are you looking at it backwards? No. What are you? Upside down. Upside down. You aren't looking at it upside down. Hooey. Oops, it keeps turning when you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let me try something else. Uh... Are you looking at it right side up or upside down? Right side, right side up. up. You can read it? Yeah. Okay. Okay, it's not a mirror image, right? Okay, all right, you would find that this is, 
Okay, let me go back to the beginning. Right here, is yeah oh almost 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 there there you got it there we go okay <laughs> <sighs> technology <laughs> okay right here is the settings so i'm going to tap on it and these are all the things that the setting uh, can control for all of your apps on your device. So I'm going to go down until I find messages. Okay. By the way, I'm looking at every, everything looks normal to you, right? In other yes. words, the letters are what's right and what's left is correct. Okay. Cool. All right. <clears throat> Message. Messages. And I can scroll down to say, right here, send red receipt. Okay. Send red receipt. If I tap on it, it turns green. That says I'm going to send red receipt to everybody. I turn it off. Now, no one will receive a send receipt. Okay. So, whenever I do look at a text message from someone, they won't know I have read it. Now, <clears throat> all right. Now let's say, here's my message app. This is my wife. And I, I can tap on next to her. Whoops, you can't see it, can you? Right here. I can scroll down to where to go. Send red receipt. Oh, I see. For that, for that person, I will send a red receipt. So I can do that to my wife, my kids, my parents. Uh, for or anyone you choose. So now when they send you a text message it, and you look at it and the second you see it, you, the second you have read their, your, their message, they will know you have read it. Now, yeah, so you can, it may be something you want or something you could care less about. Right, or you don't care. So it's your choice. So this way, at least you can have a choice of who you want to know that have read something you they sent. I think okay. it's great information. I didn't know you could do both. You could do individuals. That's great. Yes. So, <clears throat> uh, with before I discovered that little switch. I wanted my wife to know that I have she I have read what she sent. Well, at the same time, I'm telling the whole world anytime yeah. they send me a me yeah. me a message, I'm telling them that yeah, I read it, but I'm not going to answer it. Maybe right. I'm not <laughs> so now at least I have some control. Okay, <clears throat> uh, we have still have some little bit of time. Uh, uh, let's open it up to questions about photos or anything else. Yeah. I I was just putting, uh, I wanted more information on the ferry uh, scheduling or whether, you know, whether they're on time. So I just learned that I could get 
not just Vessel Watch, but I could get WSDOT um, app on my phone. And I'm in the process of putting that on my phone. And it asks me, do I want um, to, when I use the app, do I want to let them know my location? Or do I only want them to know when I, my location when I'm using the app? Mm -hmm. I don't know that was another choice, but I was wondering what you would advise. Okay. Um, to make sure I understand your question, you're talking about an app. In this case, you're talking about W-A-D-O-T, is it? I think uh, it's W-S-D-O-T, but yeah. Yeah, Washington uh, State. Farming transportation. Yes, thing. that's the one. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> almost, almost every app, when you use it the very first time, you can. They may ask you, "Do you want to let them know where you are, or do you want to let them know only when you have the app running, or you don't want them to know ever?" Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, it really depends on the app. Majority of the time, uh, I would say I don't want them to know where I am ever. There are certain apps I do turn that on that says, yeah, you can you you can know where I am. There's one, there are a few apps. One of which I can, I know it's called the Ferry Friend. F stands for Washington State Ferry. It's called Ferry Friend. <clears throat> and it says, do you want to turn it on? Do you want them to know where you are? And I would say yes, but only when I'm using the app. If you pick when, no matter what, they can find out where you are. That means you just want, if you're just walking around town with the phone, they can find out where you are, even though you have no interest in using that app. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're in the grocery store and they can track you if, if they want. And most websites, most apps, they don't track you. One nice thing about Letting, know, letting them know where you are when you're running the app. In the case of this specific app, I'm referring to a fairy friend. If you happen to be near Bainbridge Ferry or Seattle Ferry, it will give you the schedule for that ferry. But if you happen to be close to Edmonds or Kingston, it will show you the ferry schedule for those ferries. So to me, that's handy. If mm -hmm. I'm walking in Edmonds, heading to the ferry, I open up the app, you'll automatically show me what ferries are coming up. And I won't get bothered with Seattle Ferry. And <clears throat> usually that's, that's the most obvious thing I can think of. Uh, other places like um, Home Depot, uh, they may ask you, the Home Depot app may ask you, do you want to let them know where you are? Let's say you walk into a uh, Paul's Bow Home Depot. It knows you're in the store, so it may show you that store's inventory and not show you inventory of a Tacoma store. All right. And I would say for most legitimate businesses it's fine to click let them know where you are when you're using the app okay <clears throat> all right yes um i've actually I, i'm tagging on to anita your question because I, I i asked myself that too when i was downloading or uploading a the walmart app on my phone especially during the pandemic when we really weren't comfortable going into the store so mm -hmm. me and my mom, I was ordering groceries online and would pull up my car so they can put the groceries in the trunk, you know, contactless. 
that app allowed me, I, I allowed it to, um, I allowed the location finder when I was using the app so they could e so I could easily see, they could easily see when I was getting close to the store, store to time it at the time. Okay. okay. To time it when I was getting there. The same concept applied to, to this day. If we're uh, out running errands on a Saturday and I need to swing by and pick up a pizza at Domino's on my way home. And it's a time-saving thing going, I ordered it when I left Walmart, I'm swinging through Paul's Bow, I'm going to go to Domino's on the way, they know I'm going to be there in six minutes. So they literally meet me out in the parking lot in six minutes. Got it, it's, got it. it's a time-saving thing on that aspect. Mm -hmm. so, terrific, terrific yeah, just, examples. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there Great. you have it, just a little, there you go. But other questions or comments or experiences? I, yes. I, I have another question, okay. but it, it's somebody else's turn. But uh, what I wanted, like I often send a photo, like um, I, I have, my brother lives in Wisconsin. So I send an email with a photo many times and then the it will give me the choice. Do you want to send this like small, medium or large? I, I have, in the past, I've always chose large, but you know, he's got an old computer and I keep thinking, am I being um, a little rude because maybe his computer can't handle? Do, do you have any, how do you know what somebody else's computer can handle? <clears throat> okay, you don't. <laughs> you don't know what kind of computer they have. But um, let's say, you want to send them a picture that they may want to preserve, or you are just sending them a picture for them to look at and throw away. All right. In the case of the second one, that look at it and throw away, you may want to choose something that's uh, in medium range. Right. Or you can send it, send it to them in small. But if it's something, a family portrait or some really good picture that the, you know the other person may want to keep it, you may want to send it as large or original. Yeah. Ah. Original could be huge. <laughs> large is a little bit more realistic. Now, <clears throat> if you send it to them in small or medium, so, so the picture is now this big. Once they get it, let's say they send it to Costco. Oh, Costco don't print pictures anymore. But let's say you send it to a store to get it printed, get it blown up. That is going to be really fuzzy if you get the picture blown up to something of an 8 by 10 because you are sending them a tiny little picture. So if you think the other person may want to blow the picture up or print it as a keepsake, you may want to send them uh, a bigger size picture. I, or what you can do is this, send them up. Let's say you have 10 pictures of a family portrait. You can send it to them in, let's say, small or medium. And you can say, pick the best one you like, and I'll send you the full size one. Hmm. So instead of, instead of sending them 10 huge size photos, just send them small ones and then let the other person pick and then tell you, and you can then send it to them a, a good quality one. So. Thank you. Uh, earlier, there was a question about iCloud space. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> I've got thousands of photos. I'm so tired of iCloud saying, okay, you need to get more. I want the photos, some of them. Is there any way of getting them off your phone and keeping them for your ears so they can decide what to do with them? Yes. Now, <clears throat> these photos, first of all, you should, I should, everyone should go through their 
photos and find duplicates and find, I have photos that I'll take a picture and then I'll say, I may want to keep that. So I keep it around. Right? Exactly. But I know I'm ne never going to go back to it. But so anyway, you, you, you should, everyone should go through their photos, take the ones that's not so good and chuck them. Now, the basic iCloud space that Apple gives you is chintzy. I'm up to 99 cents every month. And now they say I need to go to 9.99 a month or something. <laughs> okay. I run out. The basic, um, the basic space app, uh, Apple will give everyone is five gigabytes. All right. That's five followed by nine zeros. All right. So five billion positions. That doesn't mean you can store five billion photos. It does. <laughs> some photos may take up three million or five million depending on how complex the picture is and what size you decide to take it. Now, that's a basic one, uh, iCloud space that Apple provides. It's chintzy, it's only 5 billion positions, characters. You can go to 99 cents a month, and for 99 cents, you get 50 billion bytes, 50 billion positions or characters. That gives you quite a bit more, but and it's only 99 cents. The next increment up, I believe, is 299, which gives you 200 billion characters or bytes. And that is a lot of space. Then there is $9.99, which is $10 a month, which will give you two terabytes, which is... I don't want that. I just want the photos somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> so Yesterday, I'm down to from... I'm 49.5 gigabytes of 50 gigabytes used. Okay, I'm done. I want the pictures somewhere else. Okay. <laughs> How do well, I get them okay. somewhere else? That, you have heck of a lot of pictures. <laughs> and I actually went through them yesterday, a lot of them, and I reduced it like not even a hair. I mean, look at this. It's like so high. <laughs> now, somewhere on that screen, does this show how much of that 49 gigabyte is actually taken up by photos? Yeah, it's the yellow part. The yellow is the photos. Can you see it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. You got problems. The green is messages. <laughs> I don't understand why messages. I, I delete messages. Why are they taking it up too? So it's okay. like, and the purple, I don't even know what the purple, purple is backups. But the biggest one are photos. So okay. if I could just get them off of my phone. Okay. <clears throat> yes, you can. Do you, what other item, what other device do you use? Do you use a Mac? Or I don't. Have a computer? No, Mac, uh, I just use my iPad and my iPhone for Apple. I've got a, a horrible, one of those other things that I can't figure out for a laptop computer now. Okay. What is that other kind, because I'm a Mac person, but it was too expensive for what I needed now. Okay. Um, yes, you can take all of these photos and put it out to a hard drive. Yes, how? A memory chip. And the challenge is with the operating system on a phone, or on a pad, it's kind of oh yeah, yeah. It's kind of awkward to send photos to another device. And it's these are on both devices as it is yeah. the iPad and the phone. Yeah, so it's a little bit awkward. Uh, if you also happen to have a Mac, that will make it really easy. 
but not my every- Mac is so old they don't support it, but I use it for uh, the it's still got the CD drive in it. Oh. <laughs> okay. so I'm That's sorry to I- have to interrupt everybody, but we are at our time limit for the oh, Zoom I see we are. session. Thank you. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. We can set up a session to talk about your photos. We'll yes. do.